October 31st, 2014. There are very few times in life when one can step back and say that was a day which none other can top, whether that be the happiest or the saddest. Today was one of those days. Today was the hardest day of my life. Are you ready? Yes. You're ready right now? <laughs> I'm ready right okay. now. <laughs> Sunrise of Life is an organization which is guided towards helping street children. First of all, street children, we call them street children here in Tanzania, are those kids who do not live in their homes. But then they do not live in their homes, not because they are homeless, no. Maybe they have homes to stay, but then they do not live there, so they come and live in the streets. That means they're street kids. Arusha is the second largest town or city in Tanzania so they have a lot of street kids that come from the surrounding areas and and they're kids that either um, their parents have died and they don't have a home and they have to go to the street to look for food or or whatever um, or they come from bad situations a lot of times it's divorce and a step parent that beats them or um, drugs and alcohol some of these kids come from very far um, sometimes two days of traveling just to get to Arusha and they just live on the streets at Arusha and fend for themselves day by day.
when I was in nursing school, I decided to um, come out here and volunteer in Tanzania, so I signed up through an online organization um, that Tom had also signed up with, and we met and became friends there while he was staying in town, um, and then he had heard about this place prior to coming, and so um, when he moved out here the next week, I came to visit, and I fell in love with the kids in the area, and <laughs> that was how it all started. Okay, so I'll start from when a kid comes off the streets. That's um, That would happen with street outreach. So that happens through the drop-in center, which is our center in town. Um, and the kids are shown that if they come to the drop-in center, they will be given opportunities with which they can become sustainable and have a successful life. The residential center then is more set up to be more of a like a family type situation and um, so they live here and sleep here and then they go to school in the village or at boarding school or, or English medium school depending on kind of how their plan has come about um, and they have chores here and, and you know it's kind of more of a family setting they have the mama and their other kids that live here are kind of like brothers and sisters. <laughs> October 26, 2014. I have been living in privilege my whole life in so many ways that I never knew, and even more that I will never find out about. It is hard to fully comprehend what these kids have been through. Perhaps this is why it is so easy to feel helpless here. Even being here, immersed in the culture, certain things still seem surreal. Certain things I just can't comprehend. It is hard to see the future and hope when I am faced with such devastating stories of these children's past. It is hard because I've never been asked to be so resilient. That is exactly what these kids are though. They are the picture of resilience. They have been beaten, sexually abused, starved, and hurt in ways I cannot begin to comprehend. And yet they smile. They smile because they are just little kids. And although their young lives have not allowed such innocence, they are now allowed to be just that, little kids. A lot of the kids that we have at the residential center now, we haven't previously had a drop-in center. So they um, were either here um, already or they were kids that the community came to us and said, you know, these kids are living on the street. Um, can you help them? And we take them in. The main kids that we are dealing with are those kids who maybe we can say they're homeless. Maybe you find that a kid maybe only has a father and the father can't take care, or maybe after the death of the mother, the father remarried again. So, and the mother who is married, the stepmother is not taking good care of the kid. So obviously the kid will run into the street. So we found that maybe there was one kid whom we had at the dropping center, but then he dropped out. He had very great wounds of the stepmother once whipped him and after that he even burnt him with a hot knife at the back so he came there we were treating him but then he left now that is also against the child rights 
So those are the things which make kids run away from home to the streets. So a story of the Nuru, he's been here for about four years now. Um, his situation was kind of unique because he just got on a bus and ended up in town and he didn't know how to get back home, so he lived on the streets. Um, at the time, we didn't have resources to take him home, so that didn't happen until a year later. And when he finally went on his home visit, um, both his father and mother had died. So without him knowing, he had become an orphan. October 31st, 2014. There are very few times in life when one can step back and say that was a day which none other can top. Today was one of those days. Today was the hardest day of my life. I've been living this experience protected by naivety, but today the blatant raw truth showed through and I could no longer hide. It came in the form of a dozen or so street children who still reside on the streets. Their addictions controlling their bodies and minds, they breathe more fumes than air as they huff the glue from the little plastic bottles which they hid in their sleeves or down the collar of their shirts. Those little plastic bottles controlled their lives, their bodies and minds wasting away with each breath. I never understood what the center was taking these kids away from. I saw today and I never want to have to see it again. Street children in Arusha often are addicted to glue, marijuana, um, alcohol, cigarettes. Um, so it's a very hard process to get them off the streets and into school and stable. Now, just imagine someone using drugs for something like 15 years. There's one boy in Arusha, he's called Maina. He has been in the streets for 15 years. Now just imagine, do you think that you can take Maina and put him in a center and he'll settle? It's impossible. And if we want to stop the street kids, we should not wait for them in the streets. Instead, we should go and take them before they come in the streets. That we, maybe we understand like, maybe Alpha's life position at home, because before they come in the street directly and begin sleeping in the street, they normally come during the day and go back at night to their mm -hmm. homes. So if we will only get focus to the ones who come during the day, so that we can get them and bring them in the center before they begin living completely in the streets. That would be much better to eradicate or even finish the issue of street kids. November 1, 2014. Today we traveled to a secondary school a few hours from Arusha to see some of the center kids who are now in forms 3 and 4. I looked at each of the boys' healthy faces. Smiles spread across each, their clothes clean and sharp. I tried to imagine in that moment that these boys had once been those street boys which had impacted me so heavily just the day before. I could not comprehend how such a transformation could have taken place. I cannot say I have been more thankful of relief in this whole trip. No relief has been greater than that of these three boys. Smiles beaming, laughter echoing from each. Relief from the swaying, dilapidated bodies which I had witnessed the day before.
project actually it should be sustainable it's not aimed on short terms so we make it sustainable because that's first the the plan that's the first plan that we have in that it should be something sustainable and also we are trying to make it sustainable because we do not only depends on donations from maybe Canada and the US we are also having the donations that come within the country so we write we write just some few write ups letters asking for donations from different people like companies or just individual people even religious organization if they think they can support us they support us and we really appreciate whatever they give us because it's quite a lot like the churches can give us maybe food and food is the main thing for the kids They help with the projects at the center, like the chicken project, the cow project, and the goat project. All these projects at the residential center help the center become more sustainable, as the chickens can be sold and the goat milk and the cow milk can be sold. Um, there's also a large garden at the center which uh, gives the children food and when there's extra it's sold at the market. The idea would be that if every kid was sponsored, the center would be sustainable and, and we would have consistent money and we wouldn't have to worry about how we're going to pay for things in the future. Um, our organization is unique as all administration staff in Canada are volunteer. Most of what you donate does go to the organization and to the project in Tanzania. We really believe in helping a child from when they're removed to the streets to when they're a youth, um, gone through the residential center, through school, and through the transition program, then they'll have the resources to be sustainable for themselves. Uh, my name is Prosper. I was born in Mosh. Because of the hard life of our family, separation of our parents, we have to set to live to the street. And I live to the street at least uh, one year. And I went to sun sunrise of life. And they helped me from my, when I was young. I want to have the money so I can help others who have had life like me. Yeah, that is one I want to help some city children from different places and those people who are unable to get the basic needs. Yeah, that is my plan. Yeah. Even if we have the bad kids that we think these are the kids that are the worst kids, we still trust that everybody changes. If they are given a time, they change. And if we are really dedicated to help, let's help. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs>
Bila aku penda Karibu moyo ni wangu Cukup penda Kamu coju daku wangu Bila aku penda Karibu moyo ni wangu Cukup penda Kamu coju daku wangu Leo Ona caka ku semana Leo Ona caka ku semana Penzi wangu